look at some of the application of optics. Basically, ray model, ray model, okay. In our day to day life, uh, so. Do you guys have a phone? It's my phone or even dump one. I don't know which one you have. Do you have it? How do you think the data how do you think the data is transmitted? Or how do you think you are able to talk to your friend or family? Something has to be communicating, right? Or do you guys have a cable at home? You know, local like network? If you watch a TV, how do you think the data transfer? We see, right? Um, sound also, there could be interference. Light also, there could be interference when they travel. But then, when you watch, you know, when you hear your friends talk to your friends, you can hear clearly. When you watch movie, you can hear, you know. When you watch TV, you can also look at everything as it is supposed to be. So how does that happen? Uh, something must be there to avoid all these interference of the sound, light, and so on, right? From the environment or surrounding. Okay. So this will bring us to fiber optics. Uh, fiber optics. Uh, are using optical communication, some of it is also using photographic information, you know, in camera, and some of them are using medical diagnostics. Uh, let's look at the, how does the fiber optics work? What's the physics behind it? Okay, so physics behind is fiber optics is this, the light travels here, enters here at some angle, okay? And then that light, once it enters here, it goes through total internal reflection, okay? So it doesn't, so there is, a, you see there are actually the core here, um, and there is outside jacket here, outside here, and then there is another layer. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, the other picture, another picture is much clearer. But then basically the light uh, goes through total internal reflection, and then it is not disturbed by anything external, okay? Uh, here we see this is a guide, right? So this guy here, this is a guide, it's a cylindrical guide, okay? communication system did you guys hear thunderstorm that's a communication nature is trying to communicate right or you see some cloudy sky you see you know some sunrise sunset some communication natural okay that's the early communication and then whatever we are doing in science is basically we're trying to copy the nature as much as we can right so uh, let's look at that so that is um, um Some of the early communication uh, was, you know, optical communication in place of the guide, the water was, you know, could be used as a guide for, you know, light. So John Tyndall in 1870 he first patented for optical communication. What he did was he had this light source, he let it enter through the, you know, the this um, container here and then he had the water stream going through here and then through the water stream the light was again passed here so the water stream itself uh, act as a guide for light okay
So there are, uh, you know, this is mostly informative for informational purpose, okay guys. So there are different options for choosing a fiber. Uh, there is something called step index fiber. Here you see the you know, light is inside, light goes inside, it goes through a total internal reflection. There is something called index index fiber, sorry, graded index fiber. So there is a grading, gradings, you know, the inside is like graded here. So you see um, the light again goes through different type of uh, total internal reflection. Uh, there is a different mode, so multi-mode uh, step index fiber, uh, it basically uh, you know, useful for low data rate, for short distance communication. Typical dimension is uh, this inside part is called the core, okay? So this inside is called the core, core is about 100 micrometer. Uh, this outside part, this one is shaded area, this is called cladding, that cladding is about 140 micrometer. Uh, or it could also be if just 50 micrometer as a core and then 125 uh, or 140 micrometer as cladding, okay? Uh, there is also another one called multi-mode graded index fiber. So if it's a graded index fiber, it would be something like this inside. Uh, this is more useful for, you know, higher data rate, uh, you know, data rate. And also it's applicable for longer distance application. A single mode fiber, this is what is mostly used for like a telecommunications. And, and then the typical dimension is about 8 micrometer core, so pretty tiny. And then uh, the cladding would be about a 125 micrometer cladding, which is pretty big, right? In terms of so, not base one, it's a micrometer. I'm just exaggerating here. This, if it's like this, so basically, right? And so it's a uh, you know the core is really tiny, and the cladding is much bigger in comparison to core. Okay, that's what it means. So if we look at the progress in optical fiber transmission. Uh, the year I have this graph here on the x-axis we see the years and the y-axis we have percentage of transmission through one kilometer early in 1966 we have really low like you know one percent okay but then by the time we got into 1986 here um, we got about 96 percent of uh, transmission through one kilometer so that's pretty good right progress has been uh, you know very rapid here So what are the components in a fiber optic system? Basically, we have this light source. It's also called as fiber optic transmitter. And then there is a connector here in between here. And then there is an optical fiber cable, okay? And then that, you know, this goes, optical fiber cable here goes to the fiber distribution system. This is again now distributed to the light detector, fiber optic receiver here. So you can receive it, right? This receives something. And then there it also goes from this fiber distribution system, it also goes to light detector, okay? So these are the component connector, optical fiber, uh, fiber distribution system, light detector and for fiber optic receiver and another light detector. This is, these are the components for optic system. Now, fiber performance. Let's look here. So basically, oh, they are made by you know glass rod. Uh, basically, this is what it looks like if you're to really look at the actual fiber optics. Okay, glass rod inner index is like n one. Uh, diameter is about one to ten centimeter. Length is one meter. It produces fiber for several kilometers long. Okay, so fiber optics cabling. So let's look at, you know, which part of this are we talking about? So let's look at, um, so let's look at this here, right guys? So this is what it looks like, a typical single mode fiber, okay? We are just going to concentrate on a single mode fiber. Uh, you see this number one is this part, this inside is called core, that is about 8 micrometer diameter. This number two, this cylinder outside, that is a cladding, 125 micrometer diameter. 
uh, this number three, which is a, another cylinder asset, that's called buffer, that's about 250 micrometer in diameter. And the, this other orange color one, that's number four, is the jacket, that's about 400 micrometer in diameter, okay? So now, uh, important thing is the reason this uh, we can have a total internal reflection inside fiber optics is because uh, number one, right, this core in the cladding, we choose the material with the different refractive index, okay? So this will, let's say, you know, the core would have some N1 value, core 2, core, sorry, cladding would have some N2 value of refractive index, then because of that we can have, uh, you know, total internal okay and then now in a local network area network you will see something like this right bunch of these cables really okay so this is what you would see each of these are fiber cables each of these like inside this okay So optical fiber cabling is not just used in local area, it's also used in undersea cables. So obviously right undersea means it has to be much more, the outside jacket has to be very, very um, strong, right? Because it's undersea, there will be a lot of pressure, whatever we have this. So look at this. So this, we have this fiber optics here inside, okay? And we have all these other outside parts. Also, you know, fiber optics is also using digital systems, so we have a data input here to the transmitter's circuitry, and from that it goes to the light source. From light source, we it transfer using optical cable, right? I mean, fiber optics. Okay, here this one, uh, and then that one will, you know, the fiber optics will transfer it to detector, and then once detector. From here it goes to the receiver circuitry and this is how we see the output data, okay? So fiber optics is also used in digital system. Look at a few uses and advantages of fiber optics. So uses are, you know, for carrying information in a large capacity, right? Uh, it's immune, you know, the advantage is um, it's immune to EMI. EMI means electromagnetic interference. You see the light can cause interference, right? It can go through interference. But because of the way the you know, fiber optics, these optics cable are made, it is immune to... Um, EMI, okay, and it's secure, it is, you know, considerably low weight, it's also safe uh, application, it is useful in telecommunication, right, phone, local area network, you watch movies, right, so remember <laughs> how you get your uh, local, you know, data, uh, aircraft, it's also used in medicine, this is using, um, what is, endoscopy, really, endoscopy, the endoscopy works in the principle, you know, with the principle of this uh, total internal reflection, okay, fiber optics, and it's also used in industrial shops. So now another, we have application of, I'm going to erase this one now. So the application, another application of, uh, you know, light ray model would be magnifying glass you guys are used to, or uh, magnifying glass you have used, okay? So you have used, or I don't know if you haven't used it. But how does it work is like this. 
So you use the converging lens here, uh, convex lens, a converging lens here. You have this object here. There is a focal point. So this object is placed uh, in between. Object is placed in between focal point and the converging lens, and the image is formed. Uh, you know, all the way over here, about twice of the focal length, and this this is how we see the image, upright image, but virtual image, and the eye will see this image. Okay, virtual image here. So remember, we did this problem for exam review. This really that example is like this. Okay, so so magnifying glass is an application of refraction of light. Uh, another instrument, uh, helpful in instrument is compound microscope. Uh, so this uh, magnifying glass is also called simple microscope, guys. A uh, compound microscope uh, meaning it uses two or more than two lenses okay now how does the compound microscope work is this principle again refra you know again it also works based on the principle refraction of light but what happens is it uses two lenses um, one is here convert you know this is also converging lens right uh, this is called objective lens first lens here and there is another lens ocular lens okay so this is also called eyepiece basically you it's close to the eye right where you keep your eye, eyepiece or ocular lens so how does this work how does the compound microscope work is this uh, there is uh, this object that is placed close to the focal point of this first objective lens and because this is a converging lens and the object is placed close to this focal point it is going to form a uh, real image inverted but larger magnified real image uh, that uh, real image formed by the first lens is now going to act as the object for the second ocular lens and then for ocular lens this um, real image formed by the first lens it, it happens to be in between the lens and its focal length okay so it is in between the focal length uh, f2 let's say f2 focal length of this second lens right eyepiece and the object so the object is in between the focal length of the eyepiece and the lens and because of that it's gonna now form a really magnified image in a virtual image like this and it's gonna be like this okay it's in the sense i mean it has the same shape just like the earth it's really it's like a inverted here for our case but for this uh, uh, diagram itself it's just like you know it's in the same direction so it's what i'm trying to say is this i don't know if i'm making sense like this you guys this and then you have the image object here the uh, image form is like this big so it's really inverted but here it looks like this right because of the frame of reference okay so this would be like image object this would be like image okay so this part is just the converging lens. This part is, if you just look at this part here, uh, this part acts like a uh, magnifying glass basically, okay? So that's how um, compound microscope works. Uh, so that's how the person who is watching here, or observer, can see really big image, okay? Virtual image, really magnified image. So, right, the use of microscope is to really magnify the size of the object, right? under observation so so we can see the really microscopic particle or microscopic samples mm So another application of refraction is telescope. There are also reflecting telescope, but here we are looking at refracting telescope. So basically telescope, it is used to look up the, observe the object of far, or, you know, object at far distance, right? So here is our eye, this is where we see, this is eyepiece we, ha we have, so it also has a two uh, converging lenses, right? So let's say there is some Jupiter or something here, and you want to look at that. And what happens is in the telescope you have the converging lens here because 
the light coming from faraway object it comes as a parallel rays it hits to the telescope once it is the, the you know this lens uh, because it's a converging lens it's going to convert all the light, light rays and then once it comes here it's going to form you know you know it's going to form image here and then from that that's going to be like points here and then again because we have another lens here and you are going to magnify that and then you are going to look at this here okay because of and once the light ray goes through this eyepiece, you will see the image, okay, here for this one, okay. So again, the telescope also works under the principle of refraction. There are also reflecting telescopes as well, but we will not talk about that. Oh, I, I would like to say this one. So the telescope, a hands a lipper shade. Uh, 1570 to 1690 and it was a Dutch eyeglass maker, a post patented application for refracting telescope uh, in 68 but it did not, you know, he did not get it so government purses right to the instrument. Uh, Galileo heard about his work and built his own uh, by 1609, so let's look at Galileo right <laughs> Just show you guys this real quick for information. So largest refracting telescope it's in here observatory in Williams Bay in Wisconsin. 40 inch diameter. Uh, this is really big, okay? Uh, there is a, this is a refracting telescope. We also have a There is also our largest optical reflecting telescope. It, uh, it is located in Mauna Kea. I don't know that if that's how you pronounce. Uh, it's in Hawaii, so it's at Cake Observatory. The reflector is a 10 meter in diameter, okay? We looked at a lot of artificial instrument. However, let's look at how about we look at the natural, uh, you know, optical instrument. Oh, look at this the human eye, right? You guys can see it right now. Be thankful to your eyes. Okay. Okay, so human eye, uh, I think you guys know anatomy of the eye more than me, really. Um, but let's look at what's the physical behind it. So, you know, I. You, there are important things for us from the perspective of physics is this. There is a lens here. You see there is a cornea, there is a lens, there is iris, 